So what should we do, Gary V? Let's wrap this up. Yeah, what should we up. do? What should people do? To me, hustle is maximizing the energy you're putting into somebody. I'm blown away by people saying that they're hustling and they want to achieve these great things and then their actions don't match. It's like saying you really want to lose weight while eating a Big Mac, right? So to me, hustle would be putting all your effort into achieving the goal at hand. And for me, that means making every minute count. There are a million reasons why not, but there's one great reason why, which is you've just gotta persevere, no matter what it is. It's just the way it is. It's hard being an entrepreneur. It's hard building a business. Everybody thinks it's so easy that there's an entitlement, there's a disaster. Zinging China, here comes my US zing right now. There is an insane generation of 18 to 25 year olds right now that think they're entitled to having a business because they saw the social network movie and everybody's decided if you're a kid and you know what tech is, because you used Instagram early on, you're entitled to actually build a business. Building a business is hard. And you know what makes it really hard? Everything that happens every day of every moment. So, you can pick time, you can pick money as the one or two things that you think stop you from winning your game, but the truth is there's a million reasons. 99% of businesses go out of business for a reason, and that reason is it's hard. Hustle is putting it all on the line. Hustle is waking up one day, the day before you die, and realizing you gave it your all into the parenting of your children, the building of your businesses, the philanthropy that you wanted to do. Whatever you define, it's just you know, all in, emotionally and executionally, in theory and strategy and in execution. Don't complain about it, you've made that choice. Don't bullshit me. Like you wanna spend more time with your family? Spend more time with your family. This is back to what we said about keyboard warriors. I'm trying to be very careful about what I'm saying versus what I'm doing because that's how you get exposed. And I don't mean like people calling you out and being like you suck, I mean to yourself. I don't wanna be exposed by myself. It's, it's, it's looking yourself in the mirror and saying like, am I doing this right? So to me, there's so many people that are talking shit about how big of an entrepreneur they're gonna be and how much they're gonna achieve and they don't work on weekends. You know, I worked every Saturday of my 20s. Like, and I talk to 20 year old entrepreneurs every single day. Lately I've been saying to them, this Saturday, you're gonna have more time off than I've had in my entire 20s on a Saturday. So like before you tell me how you're gonna be bigger than me, start thinking about what you're actually doing. For the first two years that I ran VaynerMedia, we had no rent. We first worked out of a conference room, a conference room. We then worked out of a co-working space before the whole WeWork and co-working space revolution and I bartered my time to help that company in exchange for a very small space. We didn't buy furniture, we scrapped. And I'd already made it, I was already rich. And we scrapped. And so the biggest thing that I want to implore everybody here today to do is to take a step back and think about how fancy are they. Are you willing to be really, really, really ghetto? Do you really need that chair? Do you really need that piece of technology? Do you really need to fly that class? Like, I I just think that we're living through an incredibly fancy culture of entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship and CEO status is quite sexy. People are selling a lifestyle that is filled with lots of fun and trips and, and champagne and bikinis and bling bling and all sorts of horse shit, right? And, uh, and I just think that that era of this era is gonna come to an end somewhere within the next five years and very honestly, I just don't want a lot of people in this room that dream to build their own businesses to have to go work at a bank or go work at a retail store. And so I would highly recommend something that I think is stunningly not talked about enough, which is if you're building a business, you have to be making money. Everybody thinks they're gonna be Zucks. Everybody thinks they're gonna build Snapchat. Go look at the data. The data shows that the far majority of this room will not succeed, not even close, to building an actual business. And I don't come here to be somber. I come here to remind you that there's only one thing you can do. The only thing you can do that can trump the moment mommy and daddy had sex to make you. (laughs) The only thing that can trump that, the only thing that can trump your DNA, the only thing that is controllable, if you want it, if you want this, is work. 
If you've got a big mouth, and a lot of you do here, search the hashtag, and a lot of you say CEO, founder, owner. I call that big mouth. If you've got the audacity to do it, and, and so many of you have heard this from me, when I audit you, and I do, because I'm curious, it's how I learn. People talk a big game. I especially love when somebody hits me up on social like Gary Vee, you're gonna buy the Jets, I'm gonna buy the Rams, you know? <laughs> you know, everybody is buying a sports team. And I love, and I love to look at what that person does. And, and then I'll DM that person and be like, yo bro, nobody, nobody, unless they were a trust fund baby, ever bought the Rams when they go skiing for a week when they're 24. Nobody you know, nobody you know, nobody you know has become successful outside of it being given to them from their family. Nobody you know has actually created success without working their face off. It doesn't exist. So you can sit and talk about luck and you can sit and talk about this, that, or the other thing, but I promise you, the only controllable thing you have is your work ethic. What is the definition of winning? And I think we all have different definitions, right? And I think that one of the things that I also wanna say is that I'm getting scared that a lot of people that are following my journey hear me talking about buying the New York Jets, and I do aspire to buy a $3 billion sports franchise. I do, it, it is what I want. It's, you can look at my fifth grade yearbook long before business was cool, it's what I wanna do. But I'm awfully scared that it's pressuring the people that follow me into trying to achieve things that they don't necessarily want, they just think it's the thing you do if you're trying to be a successful business person. Let me promise you something. I know tens of thousands of people, I know thousands of people extremely well, I know hundreds of people deeply well. There is no correlation between how much money someone makes and their level of happiness. I have friends who make $47,000 a year and are the happiest people I know. Their work-life balance is on point, they're part of two soccer teams, they play video games, they watch every show they want, they take two vacations that they scrap together and they're freaking happy as hell. And I know tons of people who I grew up with in the Silicon Valley boom who have hundreds of millions of dollars in their bank account and are as miserable and as lonely and as broken as you'll ever see. So I implore all of you to please reverse engineer and figure out who you are.